uh, today's lecture the plan is uh, to discuss briefly sketchily role of so called timing analysis in the context of uh, physical design flow okay physical design automation flow most of you would be already aware of uh, the uh, timing analysis in particular in fact static timing analysis you would have used uh, in while using the tools fpj cat tools or asic tools cadence tools just uh, this lecture would aim to give you some brief idea uh, behind uh, like at a, about the core techniques core algorithmic idea used in this timing analysis the concepts the notions of uh, so called uh, directed acyclic graph topological sort couple of notions which uh, are omnipresent in uh, the algorithms of this kind okay so first of all i mean uh, physical design as i said it's about layout right uh, so what's the connection with timing analysis i mean what's the connection of timing analysis with physical design first of all most importantly you see uh, recall that we uh, i mean i mentioned that in the automated process of layout generation a lot of uh, importance is given to minimizing the wire length right so why i mean you know first of all yes might i remark that uh, must i remark that if wire length uh, number of wires or length of the wires is very large that would kind of lead to more complexity for routing that is if root if you have want to root within some limited area then of course it becomes harder to root if you have very long wires if the wires are running very long from uh, i mean and and so on uh, of course number of wires is going to be same as number of nets but uh, like you know if you have done a uh, poor placement then it would could, could possibly mean that a lot of wires are running very long okay from uh, one side of the chip to other side uh, so that's why while doing uh, placement one uh, like one of the primary goals of good placement is to ensure as low as possible uh, total wire length of course until one does well, one does routing one doesn't really exactly know accurately know what the wire length is but uh, after placement one can get some estimates of how much the wire length would be and based on those place, uh, estimates uh, the placement heuristics would be would be guided uh, to like uh, to sort of make a better placement and so on yeah so why was this wire length crucial okay so in particular suppose this interconnect delays okay the wire delays were insignificant or negligible okay then Uh, then would we uh, would we have been worrying so much about the uh, wire length yeah, of course wire length would mean like you know root complexity of router it will be more headaches for the router but the in terms of delay of timing uh, the wires the length of the wires would not matter if the in delays of interconnects were extremely insignificant compared to the delays of the uh, the gates themselves or the modules or cells themselves okay so in this case wire length would not be so crucial but definitely that's not a uh, situation of course to some extent it will be crucial in terms of area optimization but not in terms of timing but uh, like reality is that this uh, wire delays are significant right are becoming increasingly more significant so they have to be kind of given good attention to okay so in this sense like uh, because timing is very important and the estimates of timings are important one would get an idea of what would be the acceptable wire length how i mean like we should not kind of i mean uh, uh, and so on and so forth so also like uh, certain tools or the so called static timing analysis would let it would tell you about uh, would tell the designer about or the uh, like tell the automation tool about 
what is the timing critical portion of the net list and if one gets an idea about that then one uh, the uh, in a manual or automated fashion uh, that timing critical portion which could involve some gates or which could involve some wires those uh, gates could be upsized resized to improve the delays the inertia or the wires could be widened so as to reduce it the resistance or some appropriate buffer insertion would be done to uh, reduce the delays along the long wires in the critical portion timing critical portion of the net list. So, net list restructuring can be done in case one gets a timing estimate. So, time like uh, as accurately as possible or like as quickly as possible. So, one would have to kind of this will not be one step procedure because every time you make some uh, tentative placement or routing uh, I mean layout decisions uh, you have one like you know feasible kind of uh, routing, but then you might want to improve upon it and then you look at the timing and identify uh, the critical portions try and improve there hoping to, uh, to get overall improvement in the timing and so on so forth. So, this is how the timing analysis tools will be interacting with the layout generation tools. So, many of this uh, root uh, placement routing algorithms would actually be getting a bit of feed quite a bit of feedback from the timing analysis every now and then. Okay. So, we uh, aim to look at some core notions in this timing analysis with the help of examples, illustrations. So, since uh, as I mentioned since wire delays are significant, therefore, uh, it is in our interest to have high performance would or optimum or close to optimum wire length. Okay, or appropriate sizing. And other point I mentioned is that uh, the, the timing analysis uh, helps identify the critical portions of uh, net list okay. and uh, this can be improved in various ways. As I said like uh, by upsizing, resizing the uh, gates, so as to reduce the inertia uh, like uh, or like you know uh, imp improving this interconnect or inserting buffers at appropriate lo locations. Many of these problems have been algorith uh, studied algorithmic uh, for the algorithmic solutions. So, a core notion in timing analysis and also one of the simp simplest to understand and get develop some good intuition about for more difficult concepts and uh, problems. So, that is so called static timing analysis. So, this static refers to static means not dynamic means it is something that does not really uh, put any give any specific emphasis to the runtime behavior dynamic behavior more about uh, most. So, this static means static analysis means mostly based on static information not runtime information. So, that is the delay delay estimate, worst case delay estimates. Actually at the run time the delays uh, may not be as bad as the worst case delay estimates and also the topology that is graph structure representation or graph abstractions. 
by looking at a topology and a uh, worst case delay estimate uh, one can fathom a lot one can get uh, a lot of i mean lot of use, useful information about timing uh, requirements and timing optimizations and which will help in the, the automation i mean aiming to, hoping to arrive at uh, good high performance layouts placement routing right so when you hear about static timing analysis uh, you will uh, automatically i mean hear about the terms like aat which stands for actual arrival time rat or some other uh, notation or like mnemonics uh, for this required arrival time so these are the times uh, arrival times of signal transitions okay so i'll uh, will obviously elaborate with the help of examples so things will be very clear and based on this two concept there is a notion of slack which is quite important slack okay slack will be r roughly speaking it's a difference between rat and aat okay of individual nodes yeah, just yeah so Uh, in the timing analysis, uh, we'll uh, interestingly we will be kind of dealing with will only some kind of combinational so if you start looking at timing analysis algorithm, many of them seem to be just talking about combinational circuits so I mean, what does it mean so does it mean that uh, there these things apply only to very restricted situation of on purely combinational designs no in fact uh, this combinational uh, subs portion of any design is the really the core of it okay in terms of the logic part of it the other than uh, in any typical any synchronous uh, digital uh, sequential circuit there is going to be flip flops and there is going to be a combinational logic portion the flip flops are for the purpose of storing the the flip flops are being used for storing the data or the state of controller or the state of the computation data path state okay and the combinational logic that's the, is the one i mean is is the portion of the circuit which is actually like you know continuously working continuously kind of updating its outputs uh, in response to the changes at the inputs okay so that's the combinational part of the circuit So sequential circuit is the one which is which is kind of trying to compute the next state of computation next state of controller uh, and uh, the next uh, the the next values of the variables the data items and uh, the flip flops are only like you know holding on to the state or the state of computation or the data current values of the variables the data items and so on and so forth so uh, for the timing analysis uh, the flip flops really won't i mean and we won't have to worry about the flip flop so much in fact uh, uh, at an abstract level we'll kind of be cutting the circuit at the flip flops and once you cut the big sequ a sequ sequential circuit at the flip flops if it's a well designed sequential circuit then what we'll be left with is obviously purely combinational but more interestingly there won't be any feedbacks within the combinational uh, portions if at all the circuit obviously will have feedback there will be some like you know next state depends on the current state so that means and the next state is going to become the current state in the next clock cycle so there is a role of feedback in sequential algorithms as sequential circuits but every any time there is a feedback then that feedback path will include necessarily include a flip flop one or more flip flops so if you cut at the flip flops you are going to have all the feedbacks removed and whatever the pure, purely combinational circuit that is left is feedback free okay of course there is nothing wrong really in having uh, feedbacks in the in a circuit with uh, which has pure, just combinational gates but those kind of uh, feedbacks can give you latches can give you ri rise to memory elements or can give rise to oscillators configurations uh, so there is no need like for designing latches and oscillators uh, in a, like you know in that using just 
they would be uh, one would in large designs one would typically make use of them as black boxes or as uh, well designed components and the combinational gates would be purely used for the in the feedback free manner for generating the next state logic or the output logic mili or more output logic okay so one of the things about uh, static time analysis you will notice is that this example the circuits that we will be dealing with are will be shown to be purely combinational and without feedback. Okay. Also, so again I am uh, emphasizing cautioning that like uh, feedback freeness is not the absolute necessity in designs especially feedback free I mean but uh, like in a well designed circuit the combinational part did not have free feedback if, if at all feedback is meant for holding like you know like designing a memory element like a latch then uh, you could as well use a well designed latch in that particular implementation technology and it helps a lot to like you know assume that there are no feedbacks that makes the algorithm design process analysis process very uh, smooth and efficient interesting and efficient so, I will take an example right away, uh, which we will be kind of exploring to show some concepts. So, here is one circuit. I have some uh, labels. Uh, annotations over here. In about a moment, I will explain what this mean. Yeah, so for this is again an example courtesy. Okay, here it is point one five. The book uh, VLSI Physical Design from Graph Partition to Time Enclosure by Kahang, Linig, uh, Markov, and Hu Springer. I think it came out last uh, year ago or couple of years ago, maybe. Good book. Uh, uh, like uh, fairly elementary, int introductory, and uh, well written. Of course, there are other books, but uh, I've chosen to use examples because this is not a core course, uh, like a full-fledged course on VLSI design automation. Just for the overview of some concepts, I try to keep the matter uh, simple, examples and notions simple, simplistic overview essentially. In this particular example, here we have a netlist. Again, you, what you notice is that there are no flip flops here, it is purely combinational gates, and also what you notice is that there is no looping, there is no feedback here. There seem to be this ABC, we can regard them as uh, they, are, they are to be regarded as inputs, and F is the only output. Of course, you could have multiple outputs and many more inputs, much com more complex uh, such combinational circuit. The annotations, the labels here 0, 0 is. 0.6 they they kind of they represent the arrival time of signal transitions at this inputs so you know like from somewhere like uh, with respect to certain synchronizing time let's say positive edge of a synchronizing clock in the system this uh, this signal becomes stable at 0.6 nanosecond after the uh, rising edge of the clock this signal is let's say immediately stable and so on take it with a pinch of salt, these things need not be 0. Then the labels on this wire segments are like uh, they indicate the delays of this interconnects. The labels on the gates like this is the this is the AND gate and this label name is Y and this uh, quantity in 2 indicate the delay the worst case delay of this particular gate. 
and this this is the inverter with delay 1, this is uh, OR gate with delay 2, AND gate with delay 2 and these are the wire delays 0 0.2, 0 0.25 nanosecond, 0 0.3 nanosecond, 0 0.1 nanosecond, 0 0.1. So, you do not worry too much about uh, you know this net is being driven by this, it is going here, it is going here. So, uh, like you know what is the delay of this common portion, what is the delay of this portion? One can st study at that level also when one studies the Elmore delay, RC trees. But uh, right now, just assume that this point 0.1 means that it is a delay, uh, the worst case delay for the effect of signal transition at, at this point to uh, reach or this particular pin of this gate and so on. So, point 0.3 is a delay between signal transition here and a corresponding signal transition over here. So, okay. And let us assume that uh, for the purpose of so called pessimistic uh, static timing analysis, the whole circuit all the elements of circuit the wires and the gates are behaving in the worst case fashion that is all these numbers that we are showing which are worst case estimates they actually like you know the uh, signals are stabilizing uh, or like you know tra making transitions at the like uh, with the worst case delays. Okay. So, things might turn out to be better than that in the at the run time and those things are also studied in this subject, but uh, that will complicate our discussion a bit. Okay. So, based on this feedback free combinational circuit, which is which would have been obtained uh, like you know out of a general kind of uh, sequential circuit, which has this kind of structure. Okay. There is a controller, a controller is basically a, a set, set of flip flops, which maintain the state and combinational logic, uh, which will generate the next state based on the current state. This flip flops maintain the current state uh, and the, uh, these are clocked and th this combinational logic is computing the next state, which is to be loaded into the flip flops at the beginning of the next clock cycle or at the end of the current clock cycle. Also, this uh, combinational logic is also influenced by uh, primary inputs or uh, right, in inputs from some other source, not inputs from this flip flop. Okay. These are considered to be primary inputs of uh, this particular controller, this is the controller. And then there is a data path, so the data path might have some flip flops. Followed by some combination logic, some uh, another uh, set of registers, followed by and so on. Okay, it could be uh, this is kind of a linear picture I drawn just for. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, the in general data path can be far more complex. There will be registers, combination logic, or there will be multiplexers, and so on. But uh, again, with the data path, you see that there is uh, there are flip flops and there are combinational logic clouds. Okay. Controller also has array of flip flops for maintaining the state and combinational logic for generating the next state and the outputs. This outputs of this controller go to the data path and and so on and so forth. We are aware of that. We are not going back I mean like you know leading the discussion back to FSM plus data path, but the important like here we want to add I, I want you to identify that this combinational logic is the one that we have to focus on for static timing analysis. Just cut this flip flop sort of like you know remove them from the picture what you are left with is possibly a disconnected set of uh, combinational logic clusters or clouds we can think of them as uh, which are feedback free. Okay. Like in this example, the circuit is feedback free. Of course, this is must be a very small part of a very small sequential circuit, if at all. But in general, it could be t hundreds of thousands or a million or tens of millions, whatever. Very big, uh, like uh, not everything would be one, like you know, monolithic combinational circuit. There could be lots of separate parts of it, uh, and they can be after partitioning, they can be separately identified, separately analyzed. So, partitioning has one big role in this uh, timing analysis also.
Okay. So, this was just a picture of a general sequential circuit which will have controller data path. So, highlighting which portion is the one that we are going to look at in the start timing analysis, this combination logic. So, the notion of timing critical this is uh, like uh, vaguely remarked that the timing analysis uh, static timing analysis is going to compute this so called actual arrival times and re required arrival times which will be illustrated on this example. But uh, after do doing that and after computing the slacks this tools uh, the analysis will identify the timing critical portion and in particular this uh, critical paths is an important like concept which most of you all of you will be very well aware of. Uh, critical path is the one which is going to like uh, which is important because that is the one which is going to uh, like which has the maximum delay uh, from any input to any output and which will like influence the maximum frequency at which the sequential circuit can be driven. So, that will be influence the speed of your uh, implementation. So, critical path is the the path which has max delay from any input any output. Okay. So, how is critical path identified? So, obviously the state of our timing analysis has much more ability than just identifying critical paths, but it will help to begin with like you know understanding how critical paths are found and like that that is a core notion uh, what kind of algorithmic ideas model the gra graph models graph algorithms get used that gives you some kind of insight motivation uh, to study the next level more advanced concepts. So, I will just focus on the basics. So, this concept of actual arrival time Okay. So, actual arrival time at u say where u is a, a pin of a gate okay. say it could be output or input pin. So, this actual arrival time at a u at a pin u say u is uh, this is the gate and this is say u. Okay. So, the how is it going to be uh, defined and what will be in what will determine this particular actual arrival time which is the arrival time of the signal transition the signal transitions are happening at the primary at the inputs and uh, like you know uh, because of the delays of the wires and the delays of the gates the corresponding signal transition will happen at certain time and the time at which that signal transition occurs assuming that all the gates and all the wires are working are act, acting in the worst case fashion the, with worst case delays the time at which this corresponding signal transition occurs and after which the signal be, uh, this signal at u achieves its correct value is the actual arrival time. So, this will clearly clearly be uh, like you know based on say this is v 1, this is v 2, this is v 3. Okay. So, if these are the signals which are at the, at the input of this, then this will be max of A t in this example A t of v 1 plus what the delay of this gate say the gate g, okay. comma A t of v 2 plus delay of g comma a t. Of course, we ca I can say it in much more elegant fashion, but anyway let us let us see how our thought uh, ideas develop. Okay. So, clearly this right. So, it will be the it will be influenced by the one by the pin which is kind of which has the latest or actual arrival time. You know. So, if uh, this particular input might uh, like become stable very early, but 
it will not like you know it would be of no use if some other input is going to arrive much later so the one which is going to arrive input that is going to arrive at the late, latest uh, time instant is going to define it is going to determine the actual arrival time at the output of this gate the gate de delay of this gate is also included that's common for all these cases so it looks like you know uh, it hints at the fact that this actual arrival times are recursively defined and that's the main key of things okay similarly the notion of rat required arrival time is also going to be recursively defined and i'll just come to that uh, in a moment so uh, like to do this recursive computation recursive computation of aats and correspond similarly of rats this recursive that uh, this recurrence relation is uh, with the help of dynamic programming up i did not mention this but uh, this if one is interested one can like look at this as note that these are very in interesting important examples of dynamic programming uh, one, like otherwise one can think uh, uh, like you know uh, one can also invent these ideas or discover these ideas without like you know appealing to this uh, sophisticated notions of dynamic programming very intuitive concepts so this recursive computation with the help of dynamic programming or otherwise is can, can be efficiently done done in iterative fashion by that i mean like we are going to compute the aats at all pins of combinational circuit which is which doesn't have feedback we are going to start at the inputs and then like iteratively start computing the like iteratively compute the aats actual arrival times uh, at different pins you know in certain order the pins or gates will be processed in a clever order clever but natural and simple okay clever that i don't mean it, it's going to take you effort to it's a clever idea uh, like so called topological sort clever simple natural okay so i don't want to clever to necessarily mean that it is something uh, very hard to fathom or understand very simple idea so in, in some kind of topological sort again the, the word i mean it's one of the very simple notions in algorithms and quite likely you are already familiar with it is going to be used to uh, like you know uh, visit this nodes the gates or pins in certain order and compute the aats and similarly for rats maybe the order is the order would be different over there but uh, the idea is the same incidentally like uh, i think i have missed mentioning one uh, small point the one of the reason i was uh, like you know bringing your attention to the uh, the flip flops and like you know while talking about well think that you will see the will see the focus on combinational circuit although there's no uh, most i mean uh, stand, uh, genuine like digital designs will have flip flops the flip flops are for the purpose of storage combinational logic is for the purpose of computing the next state computing doing the data processing and uh, computing the outputs so what are the uh, the uh, the so called inputs to this combinational logic and outputs from the combinational logic of course the, some of the inputs to the combinational logic are coming from the external world and some of the outputs are going to the external world so they are primary inputs and primary outputs okay but other than that we should regard the outputs of flip flop also as kind of secondary input to combinational logic like this output output of this flip flop would uh, can be regarded as a sec as an input to this combinational logic and uh, to differentiate it from the input coming from external sources i'll call it secondary input similarly uh, output of this combinational logic is going to is not going to the external world but is going to like over here it's going to 
flip flops again. So, this is to be regarded as a secondary output of this combinational logic. So, should be in some sense regarded as an output. So, and th that is of course, uh, crucial because this notion of critical path that I uh, mentioned which you are already familiar with, this says the it is a max delay path from any input to any output, but that any input any output include not just pri primary input primary output, but also this secondary input secondary output which are respectively the flip flop outputs and the flip flop inputs. Okay. So, one says loosely like critical path is the max delay flip flop to flip flop path, but it, I mean also you should include primary inputs to and primary outputs. So, basically any input to output path where the input outputs could be either of the primary kind or the secondary kind. So, I am sorry for the digression, but we will come back to. Uh, so, we were just uh, like you know uh, going to uh, get some more idea about this actual uh, how to compute actual arrival times and required arrival times. And I said there are like at a sophisticated level one can think of all this as very good example of so called dynamic programming, very important idea in, in the algorithms as well as in particular VLSI CAD has many applications of this. And this notion of topological sort some kind of ordering. Anyway, uh, this is what you will get to study when you do the uh, course on design automation or a course on algorithms data structures. So, a uh, graph modeling is is preferred. Okay. One can do this on the netlist itself, but like uh, to make good uh, use of standard packages, standard libraries for implementation, one should like and do a clean analysis, clean algorithm development and use of libraries like the abstractions are very useful. So, a graph modeling and again there is no just a single way of a single particular way of modeling things by a graph. So, that circuit that I had drawn this one, I am going to model it as a graph. So, I will just draw the graph first. Uh, this there are remember uh, like recall that there are A, B and C, they are this primary inputs or it could be secondary input, but inputs and there were labels here 0, 0 and 0.6. Okay. So, th they were those this sorry this labels were denoting the uh, arrival times of signal transitions at this input. So, I am going to have some kind of dummy source and arcs of this kind edges directed edges of this kind and this I am going to label with this. So, this is going to mean that a signal transition arrives at this input C at 0 0.6, but at A and B it is there from time 0 itself. Okay. Then A is then A is connected to input of flip, input of the gate Y. So I'm going to represent Y uh, by one node. Okay, and I'm going to label this by two. Remember that uh, Y is a AND gate with uh, a delayed worst case delay two, and this connects this wire from A to Y has delay of 0.15. So that I am going to represent it as by this directed edge because this is the direction in which the signal tra travels is 0.15. Similarly, I am going to draw the rest. So, B, B drives this inverter x which, which has delay 1 and I think I forgot this, uh, this was 0.1. Okay. So, 0.1 this is x with delay 1. Output of x drives y as well as this gate z. So, z is uh, like z is a or gate with delay 2, z is driven by c as well as by x. The length of this the uh, delay along this wire from c to uh, z is 0.1 this delay is 0 0.3 uh, like you know do not go by the lengths uh, they could be because of uh, the uh, width of the interconnects or the cap and so on other and some other factors. Okay. X also drives Y with delay 0 0.1. So, this 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 correspond to 
this x driving this pin of y with after 0.1 delay and this with 0.3 delay c driving z with 0.1 delay. Okay. So, let us complete the rest of it like there is an another gate called w which is an AND gate with delay 2 which is driven by y the delay of the wire is 0.2 and also driven by z which delay is 0.25 and this is generating as shown in that picture like uh, it is going to a, a output and the wire connecting the output of w to this output f is of delay 0.2 okay, this is your f okay so i have introduced this dummy source for the purpose of kind of capturing this arrival time information at the inputs a b c so a b c are not really gates there's think of them as some kind of input pads or some input terminals uh, at which signal transitions are arriving at certain specific time time 0 time 0 and time 0 0.6 so, this all the information has been captured here and it should you should convince yourself that uh, like this will suffice to uh, like you know know the essence of the timing information the input information that is delays of wires and delays of gates. Now, we can start building up this uh, or propagating actual arrival time information and similarly the required time arrival information. So, arrival actual arrival time at A, B, C are the points uh, 0, 0 and point 0.6. Okay. So, it is going to be a bit of a clutter here. So, I say A, A stands for actual arrival time, A at this is going to be 0, okay. A at this node is 0, A at this node is point 0.6. Sorry, uh, actually, yeah. Yeah, that's that's enough because signal comes here. These nodes are not really gates, or you can think of them as uh, simple red thumb dummy gates with zero delays. So, at the output of this, uh, like over here, we can we know that the arrival time is zero zero. Arrival time is 0 0.6. Now, based on this, which are which of this uh, for which of the other nodes their outputs we can find arrival times the signal is arriving here at time 0. So, based on this can we find can we decide what would be the arrival time of signal at this out at the output of y not exactly I mean we need we know this information this 0 0.15 plus 2, but it could this uh, arrive uh, signal transition here to a final value would depend possibly it could depend on some other input path you know for example, it could depend on uh, signal going along this wire getting delayed here getting uh, like converted and uh, uh, under delay. So, this would have led to 0 0.1 plus 1 that is 1.1 1 .1 plus 0 0.1, 1.2 plus 2, 3.2. Okay. So, just knowing this, uh, uh, this alone would not give us this knowledge 0 0.1, 1 .1 and 0 0.2 will not give us the actual arrival time here. Okay. To know the actual arrival time at this point, you will need to know the actual arrival time over here and over here. To know this, you will need to know the actual arrival time of this okay, and so on. So, we have to kind of process this, visit this in certain order. So, before visiting y, we should visit x simply because y depends on x. Okay. So, this so called topolo topological order is ordering of this gates and so on like nodes gates or nodes as in graph in such a way that we do not we visit a node only after we have visited all the nodes on which it depends. So, we will visit y, we will process y only after we process a and we process x because y depends on a and x. Okay. x we will process, we can process as soon as we know information about b. Similarly, z we will process only after we have processed x and we have processed c. C we would have processed quite quickly. X we would have once we have processed X and A B C, then we are eligible to process Y and compute do a computation at Z. And once we have computed at Z and we have got the A T also at Y, then we can go on to computing this at F or the output of this W and so on. So we have to go in this particular order, and that's that topological. That's an example of so-called topological order. That is simply visit the nodes in in an or, in a manner such that you do not visit something before having visited all the nodes that it depends on. Okay. 
So, to, uh, so topological order here will be first we will do x because x does not depend on once we have done a b c x can be done like immediately, but y neither y nor z or not w can be done because they will depend on x. So, what will be the arrival time of the uh, signal transition at the output of x? A at this point will be uh, see that because of this path 0 plus 0 0.1 plus 1, 1.1. There is no other uh, way x will be uh, signal transition at x will be output of x will be influenced. So, it is 0 plus 0 0.1 plus 1, 1.1. Okay. So, A is decided over here. Now, A is decided at this point and at this at the output of x. Now, because of the signal has made a transition here to its correct value after another point 0.1 there will be a stable value available at this input pin of y and at this input pin of y the value stable value is available at 0 plus 0.15 that time. So, and then there is a further delay of 2 nanosecond let us say at this gate y. So, at the output of y now we are ready to, uh, to compute a or actual arrival time and that will be max of how much 0 plus 0.15 plus 2 that is 2.15 comma 1.1 plus 0.1 plus 2 that is 3.2 right 1.1 at the output of this plus 0 0.1 plus the inertia of this gate that is 2 so that is 3.2 so this will be 3.2 okay similarly a over here can be computed because it is going to be max of 1.1 plus 0.3 plus 2 comma 0.6 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 2 which is equal to uh, how much 1.4 3.4 right And similarly, what will be the uh, actual arrival time at the output of W? I will just confirm and work it out. Yeah, what will be the actual arrival time over here? Yes, A will be this is 3.4 plus 0 0.25 plus 2, that is 3.65 plus 2, that is 5.65. And from this side it is 3.2 plus 0.2 that is 3.4 plus 2 that is 5.4. So, a maximum is 5.65 and at f will be a will be 5.85 okay, 5.65 plus 0.2. So, it is it is a very simple calculation very easy to uh, implement as an algorithm uh, in any language like uh, it is uh, just looking at the topology, we define, we figure out an order in which this node should be processed. All the inf labels are uh, indicating all the information that you need, the, the delays of the wires, the delays of the gates and based on that in a systematic, in a very linear efficient time, you can get all these values, actual arrival times at the outputs of all the nodes, all the gates in this particular design. Okay. Yeah. So, now that means we know that uh, uh, sorry we know that the signal uh, will as a result of signal transitions arriving at A B C at this given times at uh, at time 5.85 we will get a correct value of signal f as a result of I mean the correct combinational value of at signal f. Okay. So, now the related question is like if this is the Actual, uh, actual arrival time, what uh, like you know, uh, what would have been the required arrival times of the signals at different nodes? Like you know, should is it was it really necessary that at A the signal must should have arrived at time 0? Was it really necessary that at this C the signal should have arri arrived at point 0.6? Could it have been that signal would have been allowed to arrive a bit later? So, what are the required arrival times at the nodes? If now, we know that we are being able to receive a receive a value correct value at time 5.85 and that is because of 
these assumptions that we have made about arrival times here, these are, these are the actual arrival times, but what would be the required arrival time so that we meet a certain target required arrival time at the destination, at the sink, at the target. Okay. So, that is a dual kind of opposite kind of question and uh, as your intuition would be telling you that it would really amount to making a backward pass. Here we are going in some kind of forward direction of the signal flow. Okay. We process a node only after we process all the nodes which drive that particular node. So, that is we are going in the direction of the signal flow. If you go from the target in the direction backwards, reverse direction of the signal flow, we will be able to similarly compute this logic like intuitive notion of required arrival times. And why is that required arrival time useful or interesting? It is because we get to know like whether we have been a bit too uh, like you know too pessimistic and uh, like you know trying to generate the signal very early. We could have afforded a bit of delay, the signal might have at certain time uh, it pins the signal might might arrive later and still we will have our computation or like you know our result available at the required time say at 5.85. Okay. Definitely 5.85 is uh, like you know uh, is the best that you can get because these are the actual arrival times of signals. But could the signals have arrived late? S supposing so we get an information that the signal can arrive at node Y, sorry node A at, at time point 2. Okay, and still we'll be able will be able to get at point uh, at time one five point eight five correct value. If the required arrival time at a small a is to be is found as point two, then we know that there's some kind of slack over here point two. That means we could have the uh, some circuit that is driving generating this signal transition here could be made uh, could. Okay, we can afford it to be less uh, efficient in terms of delay and generate this signal transition a bit later. Okay. So, having computed the arrival times, we know that A here has been found out to be 5.85. Okay. Now, say we say that this is also the required arrival time, R A T is also 5.85. Okay. We require this as like you know uh, as has been given by this actual arrival time. We also, so we let us say we require it exactly at this time only like you know by this time we require it. Then we would do a backward analysis to see what are the required arrival times of signals at the other nodes. So, if here we want it to be at 5.85, then over here, over here uh, the required arrival time will be clearly 5.85 minus 0.2 that is 5.65. Okay. Then can we immediately go on go back to finding the uh, like you know guessing the required arrival time over here? No, right? Because it would uh, the required arrival time here would uh, like you know intuitively depend on naturally depend on the required arrival times here and so on. So we have to go patiently in certain kind of op opposite order in a direction opposite to the signal flow that is in this direction and process the node. So W is known. So we hope to find the required arrival time here and required arrival time here. So, how much say at z? This is point uh, over at the output of the gate w it is 5.65. So, over here at the output of z will be if this is uh, required at 
there will be a 2 uh, because of the 2 nanosecond delay of this and 0.25 nanosecond delay of this wire over here at the output of z we must have uh, we must require the signal transition to take place at 5.65 minus 2 minus 0.25 that is is uh, 3.4 again okay it just happens to be same as a like you know we'll uh, like understand the reason of this phenom for this phenomenon that why is it turned out to be the same that bit later over here now over here so this is 5.65 uh, 5 we require the signal there's a 2 nanosecond delay and the 0.2 nanosecond delay so we require this at 5.3.25 no, 3.4 sorry or 3.45 yeah, 3.45 like 5.65 minus 2 minus uh, this is 5.65 minus 2 minus 0.2, right? 3.45. Can you compare it with the actual arrival uh, the time here? At this output of the actual arrival time was 3.2. Over here it was 3.4. Some of maybe a coincidence uh, we could, uh, but like actually it is not. Over here, we have found this uh, required arrival time at the output of z to be 3.4, which is same as uh, the actual arrival time at the output of z, which is 3.4. But the A AAT at y, output of y is 3.2, but the required arrival time at the output of y is 3.45. So, there is a discrepancy here and there is a uh, like, uh, like you know thing matching over here. Anyway, so we will uh, just, uh, you would have probably guessed the reason for that also. So, this is going to tell us some, something about critical path. Okay, now, having known the required arrival time at y and at z, we will can compute the required arrival time at x and that will be, how much will that be? That is interesting. So, R A T at x at the output of x, by, by x I mean that output of x is going to be, uh, you can like you know check for yourself. I mean, I encourage you to. I would really encourage you to kind of think about it on your own, uh, because all these are very intuitively natural concepts. Even though, even though you may not have done a formal course on this subject or algorithms, you will your natural thinking will lead you to such recurrence relationships. Okay, R A T at x is going to be minimum of R A T at y minus whatever uh, two minus point one minus two minus point one comma R A T at z minus 2 minus 0.3 okay. and this will turn out to be 3.145 minus 2 that is 1.45 minus 0.1 that is 1.35 that is this term and from here 3.4 minus 2 that is 1.4 minus 0.3 that is 1.1. So, 1.1 is going to be 1.1. Okay. Once again, you notice that uh, this is matching this particular actual arrival time of 1.1 over here. Okay. It's uh, again, it's not a coincidence. So let us, in fact, wherever we find things matching, like you know, 5.85, and by design, I have chosen this R A T also to be 5.85, and then R A T here was 5.65, which is matching this actual arrival time of 5.65. So, uh, let me like you know color it differently. Okay. Similarly, here R and A are matching 3.4. See that 3.4 here and 3.4 and here also they are matching. Okay. So, from this let us quickly compute uh, the, the remaining. Once we know the R A T here, R A T at A is known and that will be R here will be 3.45 minus 2 that is 1.45 minus 0.15 that is 1.45 minus 0.15 is 1.3. Sorry, am I making a mistake? 5 point yeah, okay. here here. R A T will be 
uh, please compare it with and it is obvious to note that it is uh, like uh, that here the AAT was 0, but RAT is 1.3 that means you know we we got the signal here a bit too early we did not even have got a signal transition here it is time 0 we could have got it as late as point one th time 1 1.3 and still we would have been able to make it that is the meaning of it right. Yeah, so, now over here uh, this is 1.1 1 .1, this is 1 and this is 0 0.1. So, it is actually 0 that is interesting it is exactly matching the actual arrival time over here and that is why I will uh, like you know uh, kind of mark this. So, I will mark this mark all the things uh, along which I am seeing things R and A matching. So, and over here it is going to be 3.4 minus 2 minus 0.1 that is 1.4 minus 0.1 that is R is going to be 1.3. Okay. So, here A was 0 0.6, but here it is now it is 1.3. So, they are not matching. So, now based on that R at this will be 1.3 minus 0 or minimum of that minimum of 1.3 minus 0 or 0 minus 0 or 1.3 minus 0 0.6 then that is clearly going to be 0. A was also 0 because this is kind of dummy source at arrival at sub signal it is at time 0 here and after 0 0.6 it arrived here and so on. So, this also I will mark it. So, what I have marked over here are this uh, like you know is a path along which I have seen this R and A matching provided this RAT uh, assume that I required the signal transition at f to be same as the time at which it actually arrives. So, RAT and A, uh, AAT were matched over here and based on that I retraced and computed RAT and along this path maybe along some other path also it could have been matching, but uh, definitely along this path things matched. What does it tell you like you yes yeah, so in fact this is the uh, this is an example of a critical path. Uh, which is timing critical in the sense that if if something if this components here the gates here are like you know if they are designed to happen to be poorer then the timing will become worse or if on the other hand if they become better marginally then actually timing can improve it is not necessary that if they become much better the timing improves that much better like you know but there is sensitivity to that. So, the timing of performance of this is going to be sensitive to the the timing performance of the individual the wires along this path the gates along this path. So, this is what is considered to be critical path and a lot of attention is given uh, attention can be given to this critical path things can be resized restructured the interconnects can be made more uh, like efficient in terms of delay buffers can be inserted along longer wires of this kind 0.3 and things can be improved and design will improve. So, this is what roughly what roughly what happens since uh, like timing analysis after doing this AAT RAT calculation the difference is calculated wherever there is a discrepancy that means there is a slack things could have been worse, but there is there is no slack that is along this RAT and AAT are matching the slack is 0 that is a critical path and that is helping that helps us to identify the critical portions which can be improved for better timing or and effectively better uh, layout. So, this is how the timing analysis can give feedback to the layout automation algorithms. Okay. Let me just see uh, yeah. So, uh, I did not show the slacks, slacks were just the differences between the R and A. Uh, I am not describing this formally, I am just wanted to bring out the intuition and the insights. It is uh, something quite simple. So, you will most encouraged to read the book, uh, the book by Kahang, Leenig, Markov and Hu that title various a physical design from graph algorithms graph partitioning to timing closure. The, in fact, the last chapter of this book is on timing closure bulk of the uh, book is about physical design and the last chapter tells you how uh, timing uh, analysis interacts or uh, what kind of role it has in the context of uh, physical design automation and so on. So, this is there are some more interesting ideas there is the timing analysis again is a big subject by itself with lot of interesting research contributions. It should appeal to you, you are most encouraged to take a look at it and with help of a specific course on VLSI CAD. 
Okay.